So one of the things that uh, is tangential to this, and, and one of the core concepts of uh, entrepreneurship, is this concept of time, space time. It's a human construct, but um, it's finite. In this body here, there's a, there's a beginning, a middle, and, a, and an end. And one of the things that's most important is, this, let's say you crash your car and get that fixed, you can buy a new car. Your house burns down, you build a new house, move somewhere else. You rip your, your shirt, your jeans, buy a new jeans or shirt, and every time back, it's gone. And with that, I would challenge you to start thinking about, not in a morbid way, about mortality. And if you knew that you had a week to live or day to day to live, well, what would that do with how you focus and spend your time? Probably put a big sense of urgency in the things that are really important in your life. Stop with the procrastination, check in Facebook a million times, uh, all the things that are so repetitive and why your, your neuroplasticity continues to shrink. So with that being the most important asset in your life, you know, I've got, to, I've got to test them. I can't take that with me when I go. Maybe when I'm somewhere in space, I can grab the one Elon shot up in his rocket. <laughs> right now, at least the one I have, I don't think I can get. So that's a fact. And with that, I talked about this massive brain pollution society that we all live in. And that first principle is understanding how to separate yourself from that and understand that this time construct uh, is finite. And I've got all this competing energy and uh, activity for a, a limited mindset that I have. Your brain can actually process about um, 400 billion bits of information in a second. That's why like, AI is never going to be able to replicate a human being or a brain. It will if you just basically keep doing the same thing every single day. It's the most complex organism with unlimited potential and un unlimited capability. I was listening a while back to uh, a podcast with Mark Cuban, and he said, what should a student be focusing on, or anyone be focusing on, um, in, uh, to succeed in the 21st century? And he thought, oh, you learn how to code. That wasn't it at all. So it's all about creativity, tapping creativity, because that will never be simulated by machine learning, or artificial intelligence, or robotics. And that time that you have, is that's the magic. And life actually, I hear everyone say life's short. Actually, life's not short. Life is short if you're procrastinating, getting nothing done, doing the same thing every single day. Life's super short. If you're pushing the envelope, if you're living not only on the edge, over the edge at times, feeling fulfilled and listen, doing new things, failing at things, challenging yourself in ways that you never have before, life's really long. And you start thinking about your purpose and your mission. And all you do have is, what are you going to leave behind? What's your indelible mark? And you build that over a lifetime. And, the, and goals are important. I'm not going to say they're not important. But the real prize is the journey. It's these new experiences. There's another great doctor philosopher, Joe Dispenza. Um, and he talks about basically, like if, this, if you're having the same thoughts day in and day out, those lead to the same choices. Those lead to the same activities. And those lead to the same experiences and those lead to the same emotions. And you just keep cycling through every single time. So part of what I wanted to ask you, Jay, is that uh, how is water so magical? I go there to meditate. I go there when I surf, I completely like, lose this time, time construct. And um, my mind is clear. It doesn't have to be in the ocean. It could be a wild stream or what have you. Like, what is going on in my brain, and why is it so powerful? Okay, so, the best I think that one of the best ways to understand blue mind um, is to start with red mind. So, red red mind is a, a term that refers to you know that that either mildly or extremely anxious, stressed. Uh, you feel like you don't have enough time. You're overstimulated. You're distracted. It's kind of our our new normal. So, you wake up in the morning. Maybe the first thing you do, this may sound familiar, is you look at a screen before you even touch the ground, get out of bed. First thing you do is you go right to the screen. That's kind of a new phenomenon for human beings. Right? We used to do things like stand up, 
Uh, so I'm nostalgic about things like standing up before looking at a screen. Uh, maybe get a cup of coffee, maybe take a walk, maybe have a glass of water before you stick a screen in your face and you start getting that, that, those hits of cortisol and stress because stuff is happening, you're missing out, uh, you're falling behind within seconds of opening your eyes. Go through the day, it's pretty full of that kind of stuff, and then the last thing you do before you shut down for the night and close your eyes may be involving that same screen. Right, so this is kind of our, our new normal. Um, when we take a break, we go out, maybe go out for a bite to eat with our friends. You go to a restaurant and there might be 15 screens with 15 different sporting events going. And so your brain's processing all of that and that's called relaxing. Now you have a beer, have, have a veggie burger, and then your brain is processing 15 sporting events plus the voices of the people you're with and you're filtering out all the voices of the people you're not with. Um, and you're, you're hearing it and you're even in the background processing it because if you hear your name from across the room, you turn. So your brain's doing all that work. It's so using a lot of bandwidth, just sitting in these chairs doing what we're doing. Very relaxing, particularly after that gummy. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but, and, uh, but, you know, we're, our brains are, are working, working hard. You know, I'm sort of looking at your faces, listening to what you're saying, thinking about what I'm going to say, bouncing in this chair coordinate 200 muscles. So that's, that's sort of busy, your busy red-minded brain. If that's all you have, if that's your only mode, you will burn out. Guarantee it. I, I promise you, if you stay in red mind mode, you think you got this. And I know I felt when I, you know, I was in my 20s, no problem. Red mind, no problem. I got this. I, turn it up. Bright red mind, bring it. This is easy. You will, you will burn out. You will crash at the cellular level, physically, mentally, you will burn out. But that's gray mind. Red mind is useful, gray mind is useless. So we need red mind to do things like put rockets in space, to get to the finish line. We need to compete, we need, we need to strive towards goals. We have deadlines, sometimes we stay up late and we, we, and we fight to win the game. But if that's all you have, you will burn out. That's gray mind, gray mind, is just numbed out, indifferent, depressed, disconnected, really not, not such a useful mode to be in. And you will find yourself feeling that way at some point if you haven't already. It's just part of, of living with all this red mind. So blue mind is kind of the opposite of red mind. Blue mind is when you step away from the screen step out of the boxes that we call our classrooms and our offices and our homes, go outside, walk through the forest, walk down to the beach, look up at the sky, let your mind wander, no, you know, no, no voices, no conversations, just, just your thoughts. And that is, has become increasingly uncomfortable for people when they're given even six to 15 minutes of, of quiet. And there's a study a colleague did at uh, University of Virginia, head of the psychology department. He put college students, and you're, some of you are going to nod and you're going to relate to this uh, in kind of a disturbing way. But um, <laughs> he put college, brought college students into a room and said, have a seat. No windows, no devices, no screens. Uh, I'll be back between 6 and 15 minutes to check on you. Oh, by the way, there's a button right there. Why don't you go ahead and press that button? So this is published in the journal Science, by the way. It's not just some funny story. Um, so each of the students pressed the button, and it delivered a, a mild but painful electrical shock. Uh, and so the researcher said, would you like to feel that again? And 100% students said, no, thank you. Would you pay to not feel that again? Yes. How much would you pay? They write, write down, that's, and that's not even the experiment right there, but people would pay money to not feel the shock. Point being, they didn't like it, didn't feel good. It wasn't just like, eh, you know, that tickled a little. Just not, not comfortable. Okay, now fast forward, come back into the room, six to 15 minutes later, two thirds of the young men and a smaller number of the young women voluntarily pressed that button because the pain of the boredom of sitting alone for six minutes <laughs> was so great that they just 
couldn't stand it and needed to hit that painful shock button. One kid, and this is the part that, hopefully it wasn't any of you, um, one kid pressed the button 180 times <laughs> in 15 minutes. Holy cow, that's, that's called an outlier. They actually excluded that data from, from the actual publication. From, yeah, right. He, uh, I don't know where he is now. Um, he's probably uh, on his way to the White House, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but that, I mean, that's, that may sound like kind of a familiar story, just, you know, I, for me, give me six to 15 minutes of quiet time with my own thoughts just to think and rest and let my mind wander. I say, bless you, thank you, that is a gift. Um, what can I do for you? Uh, not, wow, that's so painful. Um, but that's really, you know, kind of describes a bit of, of, of where we are. We're, we're getting less and less comfortable with solitude. Solitude is the place where you find creativity, insight, and some of the most profound thoughts of your life will come when you're absolutely alone with your own thoughts. Yeah.